at the time of self-realization of my individuality, we lived in, in a small house in an industrial estate where I presumed that life was comfortable because we had the access to the basic amenities that one requires to live a modern life. There was piped water in the house, there was water in the house, we had nice, neat paved roads. The school was good and the classroom was very neat. At the age of seven, my parents moved to the village. My village is called Buginyanya. It is at an altitude of 2,200 meters above sea level. Now, life in this place is, was very challenging. Uh, for example, we didn't have electricity in the house. There was no water in the house. The, in the school where I went, the classrooms, the floor was made of, was just earth. The walls were made of mud. And back at home, we had to wake up early in the morning at six at the crow of the cock and the noises of the early birds to go and tend to the coffee gardens. And besides that, we also had to take cattle from the shelter to the grazing ground before we rushed to school. So I thought that this life had deprived me of the life that I knew before. Uh, through discussion with my mother, I discovered that if I wanted to transform myself and provide solutions to some of these challenges, I needed to study science and technology so that I can not only transform my life, but also the life of my family and the entire community. At an early age, I developed a resolute determination to study sciences. So I eventually joined Makerela University to study physics, chemistry, and mathematics. I specialized in industrial chemistry. When I went for graduate, uh, for, for postgraduate studies in Germany, I, 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 I concentrated in, in electrochemistry, looking at electrochemical energy conversion and storage. So my current work presently deals with developing advanced systems for energy storage. Uh, for example, developing advanced batteries for portable applications like for mobile phones, batteries for electromobility, not only for starting the car, but also for powering the car. And in the present time, we're looking at developing even bigger electrochemical energy systems that can store energy at a larger scale for off-grid and mini-grid applications. Now when you look at Africa, for example, we have a lot of sun and we have wind in some cases. Uh, so there's a lot, there's massive energy in the sun. The problem is that you can only have the sun during the day and the night it's gone. That means if you want to tap energy from the sun, you can only have it during the day. But so the energy that you tap during the day might not sustain you throughout the night. So storing energy gives you the possibility that you can have uh, electricity also running in the night. So this is why it's important to find means of storing it. I think it's a multifaceted problem. They cannot, you cannot focus on, on one thing. I think it has to undertake several approaches simultaneously. So they've got to look at uh, investing more in fundamental research that in Africa they, they have African scientists devoting their brains and time to find solutions to their energy problems, but at the same time trying to invest a little bit more in the renewable energies because globally there's a, a movement away from fossil energies into renewable energies. So African governments must invest more in the direction of renewable energies, at the same time build the capacity of their scientists to uh, develop new innovative methods of how they can improve harvesting, especially of renewable energies. Uh, for the beginning, uh, this is a little bit, uh, this is difficult. I think for governments, I think first of all, primarily, uh, you cannot, there must be an investment in the, en in the energy in order to have returns. And you must develop the capacity of the people that they can consume this electricity so that you can, so initially the government can invest in to bring these technologies, but simultaneously make sure that people are, other sectors are also developing where the consumption is also growing. So consumption, uh, the investment in energy must follow consumption, not necessarily the other way around. There must be the consumption capacity of the energy that is produced. So what I'm focusing on especially, which is my childhood dream again, is to provide, 
to bring energy to communities which are not on the grid, especially the rural communities. So trying to look at especially new systems that can store energy on a relatively large scale to serve rural communities. Uh, so I see that in, in a spell of about 10 years, we shall have developed systems, for example, uh, batteries that can store uh, relatively large amounts of solar energy to serve rural communities. So these systems are already well developed. We have done prototypes. So it is just a question of maybe implementing them, which maybe need the right policy framework from governments that we can begin to bring them to the rural communities.